Before we jump into this video, I'm going to answer a very simple question. What is the refurbishment of a Kandu reactor? While the operating lifetime of a Kandu nuclear power reactor is 30 years, it's meant to operate and run for that amount of time, three decades. And when you go through a refurbishment, you extend the lifetime of that reactor from 30 years to 60 years. So it operates for another 30 years. So the real question is, why does a nuclear power reactor, especially a Kandu, need a refurbishment. Just like cars that need regular maintenance over their lifetime, nuclear power reactors are very similar. They need to be maintained throughout the lifetime of the reactor. So you, there's regular maintenance. But then there comes a time, usually at the 30 year mark, where a nuclear power reactor needs to replace major components, right? So major components include pressure tubes, steam generators, other major valves and other equipment and that's when you start a refurbishment it's a lengthy duration of time where the reactor shut down and critical components are being replaced so if you want to learn how to extend the life of a can-do nuclear power reactor this video is for you hey friends my name is osama i have a background in nuclear engineering and on this channel i help demystify nuclear technologies by simplifying them when it comes to nuclear power technologies like prototypes or even technologies that have been running for decades and decades they all come to a certain point where they need a refurbishment they need those major components replaced and the reason is simple materials and components they don't last forever they have a lifetime and it's cheaper and simpler to replace them rather than building a whole new power reactor and you may ask why the reason why is because a nuclear power reactor requires a site license it requires a lot of upfront work as opposed to refurbishing an existing reactor and a can do reactor refurbishment has been called by several different names however refurbishment campaigns have been called many different things for example retube okay for example replacing the tubes of the can do reactor it's been called mcr or major component replacement and lastly refurb refurbishment so in this video i'm going to be calling a can do reactor life extension a refurbishment or sometimes short form for refurb let's explain refurbishment in a nutshell well what you're doing in a refurbishment or life extension is you're taking a nuclear power reactor you're disassembling it and you're putting it back together. One of the most important components that you're gonna be replacing in a Kandu reactor are called pressure tubes. And these pressure tubes, there are hundreds of these pressure tubes housed in a calandria or a reactor containment vessel. And these pressure tubes are equivalent to large pressure vessels that you'll find in pressurized water reactors or PWRs. These pressure tubes hold nuclear fuel bundles, right? Fuel bundles that look exactly like this. They slide into the pressure tube Okay, into the heart of the reactor. And this is where the heat is emitted from these fuel bundles. And it's housed within these pressure tubes. Water, it flows over these fuel bundles, which are housed in the pressure tubes. It's pressurized and it's flowing at around 300 degrees Celsius. And these pressure tubes are made up of a material called zirconium. It's a metal that's used across nuclear power reactors. And it's a great metal. The reason why is because it's corrosion resistant, it's heat resistant, and it's also invisible to neutrons. So the nuclear chain reaction can take place very efficiently. And it's a material that's built to last over 30 years for the first operational phase of that nuclear power reactor. But throughout the years, large amounts of heat pressure and neutron bombardment bring metallurgical changes to the pressure tubes. So overall they become more brittle and the tubes actually elongate over time. Now with this heat and pressure, other components of the nuclear power reactor also have some wear and tear over time. Before we jump into the next part of the video, I'm going to be sharing some of the most important steps you need to take when it comes to refurbishing a Kandu reactor. The real question is how do you know when it's the right time to refurbish a Kandu reactor? There are several groups monitoring the performance and also monitoring component condition within the reactor. This includes various different tests, but one test in specific is taking scrape samples from inside pressure tubes. So when you take scrape samples, pretty much the size of the thickness of a hair, so very, very thin scrapes and strategically across the pressure tubes in different areas. And those are sent for analysis to understand pressure tube integrity. These are strategically taken throughout the operations of the reactor. There is extensive research and development that takes place throughout refurbishment campaigns. And like I said before, refurbishments take place generally around the 30 year mark. Let's jump into step one of the refurbishment, which is shutting down the nuclear power reactor. And remember nuclear power reactors and can do reactors alike operate 24 seven. They provide baseload electricity to the grid. These reactors are shut down rarely for maintenance outages. So every several years or so, they're shut down for planned outages. However, a refurbishment is a planned outage that can last several years. 
But remember, this is gonna be a longer outage. A refurbishment is an outage and it takes place for several years at a time. So the reason why is because you need time to replace those components. You need time to develop strategies and to get project teams together and bring components into the reactor. And the very first step is to disconnect the power reactor from the grid. And this is called breaker open. It's the first step of a refurbishment. Next, you've got to defuel the reactor. Yes, so taking out all of these fuel bundles from the reactor. There's several thousands of these fuel bundles in a nuclear power reactor, and you've got to remove all of them and also remove the heavy water. Remember, can do nuclear power reactors use heavy water as both a coolant and a moderator heavy water is quite expensive. So you got to remove all that heavy water and store it at a different offsite. Operators use a process called flow defueling, which takes water from the heat transport system and pushes the fuel bundles into the defueling machines, right? So there's a whole process that takes place called flow defueling to defuel these reactors for a refurbishment campaign. Now the question is, do reactor units in a multi-unit reactor have refurbishment taking place at all units at one time? Well, the quick answer is no. Refurbishment campaigns happen for one unit in a multi-unit station at a time. This is a process called island. So where you island the reactor, you separate it from the other units that are operating. Through controls and physical barriers, you island the reactor. And another question that pops up is, why would you wanna refurbish one reactor unit at a time? Why not refurbish all of them at once? Well, there's two reasons for that. And the first reason is because you wouldn't want the reactor units to all be shut down at the same time. The reason why is because they're really important sources of electricity for a country's grid or a province's grid, wherever you're living. And if you shut down all reactor units at once, then there's a huge gap in terms of electricity. And remember, refurbishment campaigns take place over years. So instead of shutting them all down at once, you shut them down sequentially. The second reason why is because lessons learned from refurbishing one reactor unit can be applied to all the other units. So when you refurbish a nuclear power reactor, the first unit takes a while. The second, third, fourth, et cetera, et cetera, are a lot faster because project teams are becoming more efficient. There's a lot more lessons learned applied. You can anticipate technical challenges as they come up. So those are the two reasons why. All right, so step two is disassembling a reactor. All right, so step two, after you shut down the nuclear power reactor with step one is number two, which is disassembling the reactor. Although this sounds super easy, it is a complex step. It's a complex process, which requires remote tools, specialized tools that are developed, uh, which are remotely operated. Remember, reactor components are very radioactive. And in order to chop them up and disassemble them, you need to automate the process. Remember, you're gonna be using specialized tooling on work platforms to remove various components inside a reactor, like feeder tubes, pressure tubes, calendar tubes, end fittings. And then you take all these components and materials, you move it to another building, which then compresses the volume, reduces the volume for ultimate storage and then disposal. And steam generators, which are very important components in a nuclear power reactor, they are basically large heat exchangers, which exchange heat from the reactor core to the secondary side, right? Producing that steam, which goes on to spin turbines. Now these large steam generators, which are very, very important components, they are also replaced if deemed necessary in a refurbishment campaign. All right, so next is step three, which is reassembling the reactor. And remember, this is another complex process. The reason why is because it's similar to building a Swiss watch. You need both precision and quality workmanship. And remember, all of this work is nuclear grade. So all of the components, all of the equipment and installations need to abide by nuclear quality assurance standards. And remember the nuclear energy industry has some of the highest QA standards in the world. It's on par with the aviation industry or a little bit more higher, I think. And a lot of the work that goes on during a refurb is rebuilding various systems that are interconnected. Some of the main steps of reassembling the reactor are number one, inspecting the calandria for any faults or defects. Remember the calandria shell is kept intact although the pressure tubes are replaced. So you've got to make sure that there's no defects or damage to the calandria shell or the non-pressurized vessel. And also installing the pressure tubes, installing the pressure tubes, the calandria tubes, the annual gas space, making sure that's appropriate. Also the garter springs, you know, the end fittings and various other components that 
are, are used to reassemble the reactor. And remember, there's a lot more steps in reassembling the reactor. It's not as simple as those steps that are outlined. It's very detailed. However, this is just a very quick overview and guide of, of these steps. And lastly, the fourth step is actually to power up the unit. And this power up includes inserting the fuel, the moderator, coolant, and also pressurizing the system. And this is the step where the unit is connected to the rest of the operating system as well. This is the last step where there's a series of tests where operators bring the reactor power up to full level. Lastly, here's an example and list of successful refurbishment campaigns for Candu reactors that have taken place in the past. So first one that I'll point out is RTS or return to service for Bruce A units one and two. This took place in the year 2012. Next is Walsung in Korea, which are four units. Those four units were refurbed from years 2009 to 2000. 12. Then there's Pickering A refurb that took place in the year 1980. Then there's Pickering B, which are four units that were refurbished in the early 2000s. Then there's Point the Pro in New Brunswick from 2008 to 2012 was refurbished. Argentina, there's another single unit, Candu and Balsic, which was refurbed from 2015 to 2019. Then Darlington, unit four, which is 2016 to 2026. And there's future plans for Chernovoda, units one and two, and maybe other can do units, for example, maybe pick ring B again. So time will have to tell if these things will take place. But hope you enjoyed this video. This is an ultimate guide for the refurbishment of a can do reactor. If you're interested in learning about the ultimate guide for a can do reactor in general, you can check out my video and a few other can do related videos uh, for those that are interested. Hope you enjoyed. Till then, take care. Bye.